Welcome to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group, bringing you interviews with Colorado's best real estate and mortgage professionals, empowering you to understand the current trends in the housing market so you can make the American dream your reality. Enjoy today's episode. It's a great day in Colorado, and welcome to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast. Today, we have with us Brian Barker, who's the branch manager with Nexa Mortgage. Brian, welcome to the program. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It's always good to talk to professionals in the area, and I love to hear the story behind how you got into the mortgage industry in the first place. So what is your journey into uh, the mortgage industry? I fell into this... uh pretty backwards, to be honest. Um, I was working in oil and gas as a landman and oil crashed at the uh, beginning of 2015. So I was out of a job looking for a job. I had a friend who I heard worked with credit. I gave her a call and she said, why don't you become a loan officer? And I said, what's that? So <laughs> that, that was the start of it, you know? She was probably rolling her eyes at that point going, oh, my word, if he doesn't even know that, I've got a long road to hoe with this dude. Oh, 100%. You know, and it, it, some of the aspects, you know, we, we can make great money in this. So it's, here's a job you know nothing about. You can get into it with yeah. with literally no cost and you can get there. I was like, I don't understand. So I uh, took a chance, started as an assistant, and worked my way up. Neat. And And what year was that? So I got licensed at the uh, 2016. Okay, right at the end. So, so yeah, at the at the beginning of kind of like some of the you know ramping up momentum. So that's awesome. So you probably had uh, a lot of opportunity to work with buyers and refinances and home improvements. Is there a specific type of loan that you tend to specialize in? The ones that. Uh tend to create problems for people. I, I try not to focus on that a paper, easy money, which some days I kick myself for, but I, I, you know, at the end of the day, we can all get paid. It's helping a first time home buyer, the single mom, the veteran with poor credit that, you know, fulfills the role at the end of the day, it's always a job. So that's kind of where I focus. Um, honestly, I could probably count the amount of refis I've, I've done on, on both hands. And that includes when rates were in the twos. Wow. I've always focused on purchases. So. Smart. Hmm. That was really smart. <laughs> Some days, man, there's, there's loan officers out there that would, you know, have stayed away with it. And now they're really regretting sure. it. So, um, yeah, smart in that aspect, but definitely more stressful. Now, you, you mentioned a paper type clients. So if you're not specializing in that, why don't you elaborate a little bit on some of the the uh, the loans that you're helping people with and and you know what what can you do for people that don't have that a sterling credit well i mean the the biggest thing in in the wholesale channel and, and especially with nexa um you know we have over 100 lenders out there so if there's a a want to buy a house there's a program that that will in theory fit that niche um you know, we can do VA, FHA, all the way down to 500. We even have no overlays on, on the VA side. We can go below 500. In some cases, um, construction loans, one-time closes. Um, and then we have multiple down payment assistance programs. So, you know, in Colorado, CHAP is a big known program, but there's a lot of available resources, especially for people who have higher income but haven't been able to save money. Uh, we have programs for those. So, that's interesting. Those are the uh, the benefits um, over here. So, Brian, you mentioned um, a couple things that kind of stood out to me. I want to either put a pin in it or clarify it because um, you mentioned you can go below 500 credit score on some programs like VA. And obviously, if you're doing VA, you're working with uh, military. Um Clarify that because I know that um, way, way, way back in the day when I did a mortgage loan or two, 500 credit score was super low. So if you can go down to that realm and provide VA benefits, that's a pretty amazing opportunity. Yeah, it's a huge, huge thing. And that's a big misunderstanding is, um, you know, the VA program itself doesn't have a, a credit score minimum. So what you run into is the lenders lending out the money, say, hey, we want 640, we want 620 as being the big common one. And 
most people understand that that you can't buy a house unless you have a 620, and that's not really the case. Um, VA, we have two lenders that will work with no credit score um, or low credit scores, you know, below 500. So as long as they're, they're past events and credit's looking up and we can make it work within the guidelines and with the underwriter, um, you can do those loans. It was actually one of the first loans when I came over to Nexa, the guy had a 536 and was told multiple times by local lenders that he couldn't do anything. And we were able to close it 30 days, no problem. Wow. And, and you know, maybe even I, I was not in the military, but I understand through some colleagues that sometimes military veterans transitioning out of the military into civilian life becomes difficult in a lot of areas from the skill sets to jobs and all that. But I would venture to say that if you are working with a veteran, helping them get into a home, that becomes roots that gets put down. That gives them sense of worth and confidence and all of these things that would even help combat some of those things we hear. Right. Is that kind of your experience? As far as vet- veterans purchasing homes, I mean, it's a, yeah. a great thing. Um, and, and Colorado is a unique market, uh, especially down here in Colorado Springs where I live. Um, you know, we got quite a few bases and um, it seems to be growing. And it's one of the places that once you come to Colorado and you're looking about going back home to wherever that may be, Colorado rates up there. So a lot of uh, retired military and, and veterans stay put here in the springs and yeah. we'd love to help those guys. You know, you also said something else that was really curious when I said, Oh, that's uh, you know, smart, which is you can count how many refinances you've done on two hands. And during the times when the rates were so low and everyone is just, you know, cranking out the refi loans, um, then when rates kind of inch back up and they, those loan officers need to focus on purchases, they don't have that stability and they don't have that knowledge base because there is a whole other set of, of knowledge that is needed for working with a buyer to buy a home from working with realtors to inspections to all these things. So talk a little bit about how your focus on working with buyers gives a little bit of a leg up in your, your experience in your office to the people you work with because that really becomes an area of expertise for you yeah i mean purchases like at the end of the day you're you can make or break someone's life if if you screw up the transaction you know their earnest money maybe all that they have saved up to get this done and if you know that's where the stress comes from and making sure your pre-approvals are strong making sure they understand the process so uh you don't lose that money for them you know because most people are going along for the ride you know, they're, they're going to lean on you, their friends, um, past experiences and their realtor. And that's a big thing is having a solid realtor partner and team. You know, I, we definitely have two sides of, of it, real estate agents and, and lenders. And we don't always see eye to eye per se, but you got to be a good, strong team when, when it comes to handling those first time home buyers and walking them through the process and understanding it. You know, like I, I try to tell everybody. Ask me the question until you understand it. I, I do this every day. Some days I'll explain That's it. Great. Make it clicks in someone's head and the next guy you've said it a thousand times and he doesn't understand it, but you don't want that feeling. Yeah. You know? So you just gotta understand that this is their life and not yours. And put them first and I think it always works out. Hundred percent. Teaching and educating and and the fact that you say to them ask me until you understand it, they feel comfortable. Cause sometimes people are like, oh, I'm not going to ask again because I just, so, I mean, that's a really neat thing that you do consciously to make sure that they feel comfortable. Um, what are some of the things that, you know, you, you know, what are the questions that you tend to get asked several times that people typically don't understand that once you explain it, they're like, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> it, it varies. Um, some, you know, I, I, my thing is I, I really don't like, to have somebody go through a process and not ask questions. Like I, I feel like at that point you're not you're not listening, you're not understanding, and we're gonna get to the closing table and all of a sudden you're gonna go, wait, what what does this mean? What is that? And you're like, We've we've given you a loan estimate, reviewed it, you know, we sent you an email with a little video to explain it and break it down. We've we've done all these steps to take caution so you understand it, you feel good and there's no buyer remorse. So I think a lot of the questions, um, they always start off with, you know, either the credit situation um, Mm -hmm. that they're in 
and whether they believe they can or can't purchase a home. And then understanding just because maybe you make some money, you have some debts and what you can really afford. I think one thing that, that lenders and people are guilty of um, in this industry is just because we can make the loan work, is that really the best thing for the client? Mm -hmm. And just slowing down to explain it, like, you know, we're going to max this out. And yes, you can afford it on paper, but we're not counting taxes. We're not talking about beer and pizza on Friday night. Like there's a lifestyle to that's a great point. Home. And does that, does that fit what you want? Some people are okay looking at that picture of Paris and some people want to go there. So understanding your client and just talking to them like a, you know, your friend in person that, that you met with and just advise them like, you know, most of this is, comes down to a math question. Here's, here's the math. Does it make sense to you? And they make the right decision. You don't have to push one way or another. That's a great point you bring up because even though I can qualify you on paper and get the loan approved, is it the best for you? Because like you said, um, you know, yes, here's the full payment with taxes and insurance, but did you calculate in the smaller house you're moving from into this bigger house and now your heat bill is going to be more? You know, things like that. And and I think that's a such a careful and cautious thing that you're able to do, which is let's think through this and, you know, maybe we go down a notch in the size of house, but, you know, you might come back and thank me in years to come going, wow, thank you for that advice because we do have some flexibility and margin now on our budget. Oh, absolutely. You know, and that was, I wasn't in the industry in, in 2008 when everything started to fall apart and we crashed a worldwide economy but that was a lot of it like we were just pushing the guys were pushing loans out and not explaining it to these people yeah. and obviously the government stepped in and made that a little harder to do and we have a lot more paperwork and documents we have to collect and do to make sure that they can afford it but people's ass grasp of financial you know responsibility and payments is so lacking um in general that are you finding you that them, people yeah. are choosing fixed Every rate loans day. more often these days? Say that again. I'm sorry. Are, are you finding that people are choosing fixed rate mortgages more often these days rather than adjustable, or is it still something where it's case by case? No, it's definitely more fixed rate, um, especially with rates being as low as they were. There was really no advantage to doing an arm um, as rates have shot up here, you know, this year. In the last few months, I think arms are becoming something to look at for the right person. Um, but again, it's explaining that process. If you're, you know, a savvy investor, you know you're going to be in this house for a couple of years. There's really no risk to that arm. But if you're just trying to make it affordable and you think saving that money for a few months and not realizing what happens after a year, two years, depending on rate, that's where people get in trouble. Um, sure. No. So, like, a lot of people keep saying date, date the rate, marry the house, and I, you know, that that may work for the right individual, but that could be some really detrimental advice. You don't know what the future holds to refinance for these folks. So, you know, you just want to make sure treat them like your grandma, essentially. Hmm. You've had some great one-liners. I'm trying to keep up with them all. <laughs> yeah, you know, look at the picture pairs versus wanting to go and <laughs> yeah, hate the rate, marry the house. Yeah, you guys, that's some good. That's some good that's, uh, well, um, talking I mean, points. You know, that's all over social media, and I, you know, I don't know who started it, and 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 that's where I, you know, our job considered sales, and I, I'm not a big salesperson. I don't like sales. I don't like being told I'm a salesman. You know what I mean? I like to provide a service. And that's why I say it's a math question. Yep. You know, here, option A, option B, what makes sense to you? And it's, it's pretty hard to cheat numbers. And I would also um, add to that, it's hard to cheat uh, empathy and authenticity where you can just say, Oh yeah, I'm serving you. And it's all about the numbers, but then people feel still pushed and confused. But when you can um, educate and teach and have empathy and, and really care for people the way that you have expressed here, and then you marry that with the numbers, then they're like, 
the epiphany and the light bulb went off for them. And they're like, yes, thank you for that. That just feels right here. And I understand you told me I could buy this or that or the other, but right in here is the sweet spot. So I think that, uh, you know, like the, the dog that can uh, sense fear, you know, I think that customers and borrowers can sense when, you know, you don't have their best interest in mind. And it's really apparent yeah. that you do. That That's the goal. You know what I mean? There's um, a lot of ways to purchase a house and a lot of companies out there, but who you work with matters at the end of the day. Um, and having someone that, you know, mo- most of the time my cell number um, is the way I communicate with just everybody. So, I don't, you know, we have an office line, but I, I have to look at what it is. I just give my cell number. You know, you can always reach me. We can always talk about it. Are you finding yourself working with more first-time home buyers um, where they just have no experience in buying, or do you have a good mix of people that are selling house and moving up to a different house? Um, last year, I, I think, is going to be one that, that's always referred to as very unique um, with, with the way the market was and, and home prices and needing fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 over asking price. like mm. that, that really limited first time home buyers for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we still were able to work with the ones that can, you know, use DPA plus what, what you have in your pocket to come up with the difference and who's getting creative to get those first time home buyers into places. So it's always been, um, the last year was more of a mix of people selling their house and, and going out and, and buying something different, uh, whether they were downsizing because kids are out or they're, upgrading because they got kids coming on the way so but i just purchases in general you know and we did a lot of investors i would say last year um it was a big market for them so that's curious because if the market is so hot and sometimes investors were having trouble finding good deals so probably when the market cools down a little bit is when investor uh, activity even ramps up a bit right yeah i would i would say you know, most of what I've been dealing with are people looking at second homes and investment properties out of state mm. um, from past clients on their on their purchase because Colorado is a unique market right now um, or an expensive market, not so unique. But when rates shot up, the the investors are are playing the long term game. Yes. You know? So they're back to the this house will be X amount in the future, or I can put a tenant in it and still rent it for for X amount of dollars and, and make money. So interest rates to them aren't as important as the bottom line numbers where, you know, your first time home buyers at the budget. And wow. Yeah. They 6, feel 7%. It. I'm very, so, yeah, when in reality, the you know, if you look back 10 years or 12 or 15, boy, 6%, uh, 7%, that was like, okay, that was pretty average. But it's just in the last few where they dip so low. So it's all perspective. And it really does get down to if you need to buy that house because you moved here or you, you know, or whatever the case is, get the best possible deal you can get now and look and see what the rates do in a minute or two or a year or two and all of that kind of thing. But the bottom line is understand the process. And that's where, Brian, your team comes in and yourself to teach and educate and make sure that they understand the process all along the way. So I think that is so important. And, and, you know, like you said, um, you know, everybody can, you know, shove math in front of people and go, here's this and that. But if they're confused, oof, that's not a good relation. That's not a way to open a relationship, but how you can explain uh, to people what they're up against and listen to what they need and then present some options. That's the, that's the optimal relationship. Absolutely. So if someone is listening to this going, hey, Brian, uh, take a look at our situation or we're looking to buy or move up, what's the best way they can reach out and learn more about your company and then even uh, connect with you? Like I said, I, I use my cell phone. So the, the best number to reach me at 303-908-3058. You know, you text and call that. Um, we do have a, a couple of websites, lindedkeepmortgage.com. Um, you can find us, you can find me under Brian Barker at Lyndon Key on social media, uh, across platforms. And then uh, we're going to be rolling out Nexa, I should say, is going to be rolling out what's going to be called MortgageSupport.com. And it's uh, going to be an online platform where you can find lenders um, driven towards real estate agents and consumers that have questions. And that's we're just there to help and answer questions there. So 
good information, but that's where you can find me. Neat. Well, Brian, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you and learning how you serve your clients. Well, thank you guys for having me. Thank you for listening to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group. To learn more about the topics mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.coloradorealestateleaders.com.